Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today I'm going to show you guys how to build a very simple portfolio website and upload it to Amazon Web Service. So Amazon Web Service is a cloud platform where you can host static websites and build web applications. And the first thing you need to do is create an account on AWS. And after you've created your account and logged in, you'll arrive at a page like this. And under build a solution, you go to host a static website. So you click this button here to create a new website. You just put in the name of the website and just click this button, create your website. And then after you've created your website, you should arrive at a page like this. And right here is your domain. So it uses CloudFront domain to access your website. But if you have your own personal domain, you can associate your own domain with your website. So to upload content to your website, you would go under the source code panel and drag and drop your code into this box. So the code has to be in a zip file and there has to be an index.html file in the code. All right, so I didn't have any code changes in that upload, but for your first upload, it may take several minutes. And depending on how much uh, content was updated, it can take some time. So don't uh, freak out if it's taking a very long time to load for you guys. All right, so then to view your website, you just click on that image right there. If you saw it, yeah, I'm right here. And this is the website. So it's very simple, one page website that has a landing page, an about page, services page, portfolio page, and contact page. Also has a footer with links to my social media accounts. In addition, there's a sidebar navigation menu that when you click on one of the items in the menu, it will scroll to the desired page. So uh, first thing you need to do is create a directory. I called mine CloudHeads app. Uh, CloudHeads is the group I'm working with um, for my class, so. I just put all the content in there since it's going to be a part of a bigger website. And in the index.html file, you create your HTML tags, your head tags, and your body tags. And then within the head tags, I put in my link to Bootstrap. Um, it's downloaded here into this vendor folder, and then I just call it. I make a reference to it here, this link tag. I use custom fonts from Font Awesome, Google Fonts, and then I use icons from Simple Line Icons. This is where the style sheet is referenced. So I'm using CSS for styling and the stylish hyphen portfolio.css file contains all of the styling attributes for my code. Oops, it's right here. Alrighty, this is within the body tag. And the first thing I did was navigation, contains each item in the sidebar, and then it contains this right here. This is the little hamburger in the upper right here in corner that you expand. All right, 
This is the landing page. It contains a header, a div tag, an h1 tag, an h3 tag, and then an em tag. You don't have to use em, you can use a p tag here. And then it has a call to action button. So when you click on it, it'll go down to the about page and it uses js scroll, which is a JavaScript plugin. It might be jQuery. Let me see. Yeah, it's a jQuery um, package that allows for ease of scrolling. So under the vendor file, you see jQuery ease, that's what's used for the scrolling. This is the about page. Um, it uses the bootstrap grid system for aligning the content. It also has a call to action button with the JS scroll trigger. So to see that when you click on the button, it'll scroll to the next page. All right, this is the service page and it uses the simple line icon downloaded package and basically if you go here to simple line icon.css it has all the different icons that you can use and if you want to know what they look like you can go to simple line icons.com and it'll show you what each icon looks like this one. So I just gave some quick descriptions of some services I can offer. So next is the portfolio page. So this also uses bootstrap grid system for aligning the content and it has a link to two websites. One is hosted on Google Cloud Platform. It's a Star Wars. The first one is a Star Wars uh, web app built with Node.js. So I didn't build this website. I uploaded it onto Google Cloud Platforms and I'm going to tweak it and uh, make it my own. And then next one is a WordPress blog. That is under construction. So last is the contact page. So this has it, um, form fields and a button that will send an email to my email address. Let's take a look. All right, so the user would enter all of the information and then um, formsfree.io would be used to forward me an email. So right here is the JavaScript that does that. So what it'll do is capture all of the information entered in the contact form. So contact form is right here. That's the ID. And then ID equals contact form. So there's a form tag right here. There's the ending tag. So everything captured within this form, when the user hits submit, um, it's set to a variable and then validation is used to make sure that none of the fields were empty. 
and then it uses Ajax to make a post to formsfree.io and serializes the data and sends it as a JSON. Then the user will get a alert box saying that their message was sent successfully. So let's see. So after you submit, it'll give you acknowledgement that um, your email will submit. And the reason I looked up my watch is that I just got the email. <laughs> Let's backspace. So that's probably something that should be fixed. The user should be automatically redirected back to the website. All right, and then at the very bottom are the social buttons. So I uh, created a footer tag and within the footer, you create a list and then in that list you have whatever, however many social icons that you want. And I'm using the uh, simple line icons. There's one for LinkedIn, one for GitHub. Uh, they have one for Facebook, Twitter. Um, you can go to the website and see which ones they have available. Make a change. There's a mistake right there too. So let's make a change. All right. So if you do make a change to your website, let's see you would recompress the file. And then drag and drop it into your source code box. It'll ask you if you want to upload an overwrite Click yes. And now when you go to your website, it'll have the updated uh, content. Right here, I added my name and I removed that. There's two dashes and a bracket. And that's pretty much it. So in the next video, I'll go over the Google Cloud Service website. Thanks for watching.